Hello and welcome back to Jimbo's PC Builds. Today it's time to add another cooler to the Cooler League. <laughs> So without further ado, let's have a look at the cooler that we're going to be adding today. We're going to be adding the Up Here, Up 2 Series Cooler. A couple of points to note about the Series 2 cooler that we're doing today. Um, this is the 6 heat pipe cooler. It's actually available in an 8 heat pipe as well. So you could argue that this is the more junior cooler of the two. So it'll be interesting to see how it does. It's also available in multiple colours, it's available in black and white, etc. Um, so, but I'm testing the one that's black. Obviously, the white one will be cooler. So moving on, we're going to be doing this usual stuff that we do with every cooler. I'll be going through the uh, install, because as you can see behind me, it's already installed. And then I'll give you my thoughts on the install. Then I will go through the test results, going through the usual temperature and noise ratings, then we'll go to see the score, do some analysis on the cooler, and then I will give you my final thoughts and conclusion on the cooler. All right, so without further ado, let's get on with the install. How did it go? I must confess it's a little bit fiddly. A lot of the modern coolers now 
They come with they do come with a backplate, but they have prongs that go through, and they're easy easier to install because you can hold them or whatever, and then you can attach stuff to them. This the approach that up here have taken with this cooler is it's a backplate with just screw holes in, so you have to get the screw holes through the holes on the motherboard then put screws into them but then when you put the screws in you've got to put a wash a, like a plastic bit on it then you've got to put the bars that you would attach the cooler to then you put the screw it's it's not the easiest cooler to install to be fair they do provide they do provide tape on the back plate so you can tape it to the back of the motherboard if you for like most people if you're going to be installing it normally that would be fine because you don't want to stick it. Because myself, because I have to take coolers on and off all the time for testing, I didn't use the tape, so it made the installation a little bit more awkward. But still, trying to when you get big prongs to get through the holes, it's easier. It's you just they just fit through. Trying to line up screw holes with the back was a bit more of a pain. Other than that, it was pretty straightforward. I have to say, very pleasing that when you've got a cooler like this, where there's a plate that comes up the top and you've got to go down with a long screwdriver, they do provide a long screwdriver, which is great. The quality of the screwdriver isn't the best, but you're only ever going to use this once to install the cooler anyway, so it's great. All right, so now I've gone through the install, let's get on to the test results. So base temp. The base temp of the Up Here Series 2 was 21 degrees, which isn't stellar. Um, but it does put it sort of not bottom of the pile at this point, uh, which I, I have to say isn't too bad. Bass sound. The bass sound was 35.3. I tended to find when the PC was first turned on that you could actually audibly hear the cooler going, um, which at this point doesn't bode well because if it's having to spool up when the PC is effectively not doing very much, it, I don't think it will do very well in Cinebench, but let's go forward and find out. Cinebench score. The Cinebench score was a little bit better than I thought it would be. It was 27,297, which puts it third from bottom. But it doesn't perform as badly as, say, the Ulsi M120D, which is a cooler I'd directly compare it to, because for me it's of similar build quality, similar type, so it performed better than that. So yeah, obviously it's finished lower, so there's got to be a reason for that. So let's now have a look at next. Max temp. The CPU thermal throttle. The up here Series 2, or oh, this version of the Series 2, which is the 6 heat pipe version, was not able to fully cool for the whole run in Cinebench for the 12900K. So that's what it is. I'll go into more details about what my thoughts are on this in the conclusion but it got a, temp, a max temp of 100 degrees. So that will have an, obviously have an impact on max sound. The max sound we got from the cooler was 51.5 decibels, which is actually not that bad. So it would tend to tell me that the fans that are installed aren't too bad. They're, they're not the heaviest in terms of sound, or they've got a RPM uh, or the max RPM isn't that high of the individual fans. Either way, they don't go that loud compared to some of the others. Like on the LC120, that was hitting 53.1 decibel. The AK620 was hitting 53.9. So there are other coolers that were giving more output in terms of sound. This wasn't. So I don't know if it's the fans on the actual come with the cooler holding it back. Um, that would be my guess, rather than the actual the quietness of the fans based on the price of the cooler which is only $46 so yeah I would tend to say that it's the fans holding the cooler back at this stage scoring range the scoring ranges haven't changed they are the same as before and here is the cooler league table for series two uh, it's third from bottom uh, it's in the red zone but it's only just in the red zone because in total score it finished the same as the Thermal Right Frozen Note 360 ARGB. As I say, I'll go into my final thoughts and conclusion about this cooler shortly. Um, but yeah, let's have a look at the further analysis to see if there's any redeeming qualities to the cooler. So the cooler itself is still not doing that great. The cost per below C is obviously very high because it didn't get below 100 C, so therefore it's the full price of the cooler at $46. The cost per point isn't actually too bad. It was only $2.88, which is only beaten by some of the really good thermal right coolers, the likes of the Phantom Spirit and the Frozen Edge. 
into and the um, Peerless Assassin. They are only the ones that have really beat it on price. So you could argue what you're paying for this cooler, it's not too bad. So is there a redeeming quality to it? Yes. But I'll get into that in a minute when I in a second, sorry, when I go through my final thoughts and conclusion. So my final thoughts. As I mentioned earlier in the video, this is the six heat pipe version of the cooler. There is an eight eight, ooh, eight heat pipe version, easy for me to say, that is available, which is seven dollars more on Amazon. Um, I would be it'll be interested to see if the eight uh, heat pipe version would be able to actually manage the cooler 12900K. I've got reservations because I think the fans um, on this were the, what was holding it back, not necessarily the cooling capacity. So with that in mind, the, the, the sort of the way the cooler's built, it's like an all-in-one unit, so changing the fans out would be exceedingly difficult. So it's difficult to say, trying to put different fans onto the cooler to see if that helped us. I can't 100% say for certain. But it would be interesting to get hold of the heat, eight heat pipe version to see how that does. What I would say about this cooler is because of its price, I think it would be really a nice cooler to cool, say, like a 5600X from AMD or a 13-1500K from, uh, from Intel, somewhere like a mid-range cooler, a mid-range CPU. I think this cooler would do very well with kind of middle-of-the-line uh, gaming CPUs, I think it will do okay with that because it didn't thermal throttle all the time with a 12900K, so it was close. So it does have that possibility of sort of a peculiar you should consider for that kind of CPU. However, there is a big, big however, and that is the thermal right coolers, the likes of the Peerless Assassin, the Phantom Spirit, they are all in the same price range, if not cheaper, and have greater cooling capacity. So the problem that up here I've got with this cooler is they're coming up in the same range as Thermalrite and they're not quite meeting them. If they could put better fans on this cooler, then maybe I think it would have a chance with competing with those and then it's a cooler you'd have to take seriously. As it is, probably not. All right, I hope you found that useful. If you did, please toss a like on the video. If you've got any questions on the cooler, suggestions for the video or anything else, please toss them in the comment section down below. If you didn't like the video, please toss a dislike on it, but please make sure you leave a comment to tell us why you didn't like the video and how we can improve the video and the channel going forward. Please subscribe. More subscribers is always welcome because the cadence of my videos is not that great. So hitting the bell icon will, means you'll be informed of when I get one out. It's normally around one month. I sometimes slip with that. I try and get them out if, uh, and make up for it further down the road if I can. Um, but, you know, I, work commitments and everything else means that uh, I'm not able to do that all the time. So hitting that bell icon and subscribing is essential to get see and, and when any more coolers are added to the Cooler League. All right, that's all the YouTube stuff out of the way. I hope you have a great day. And as always, take care. Thank <laughs> you.